Uh, whoops. Okay, hello everybody. Hi, how's it going? Okay, so there's this, there's this scene of me big. Hello everybody. Uh, let me fix my tie. Hello everybody. This is Miggy Ferrero Rusher from San Diego, California. And today I'm going to try something new. I decided to call this segment the black tie show because I'm going to be wearing a black tie during these types of streams. And I had this idea of wanting to read on stream just to try something different. And so I hope everybody enjoys it. I hope everybody likes it. Um, if you like what I'm doing, then please, like and subscribe and have a comment these things really encourage me to, to keep going with streaming which i do for fun like 100 percent. i love doing this for fun if you feel so kind to give me a donation there's a twitch tip jar somewhere there uh i have a paypal link i have a cash app so as soon as this whole project takes off, I hope some of you guys will be grateful, gracious enough to give me some tips, some monetary compensation. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be wearing a black tie for the black tie show. So this is the Miggy Ferrero Rusher black tie show episode one. Uh, my friend told me that it would be a good idea to do short stories. And then maybe start doing longer books as we go, as we move forward. So to start the Black Tie Show, the first episode, I am going to read out of this book that I picked up at the last bookstore in Los Angeles. It's called Gothic Black Sci-Fi Short Stories. In short, this book is a collection of sci-fi short stories written by black authors. And uh, I think that's kind of fascinating. Uh, there's a little bit of history about who wrote the first um, the, the first black author to write a science fiction. Um, and if you guys are interested, I can read the introduction and in some other at some other point. So, anyways, let's put a marker. Uh, how do I put a marker in the chat? I think I put at marker. Mark, I forget how to do that. I know there's a way to mark something. Is it just mark like that? I'm, I don't know. <laughs> hey guys, put in the chat how you add mark. A marker in the uh, in the chat so that whenever I start reading, there could be like a marker, and it'll be easier to to to, to do this. Also, I, I guess I'm working through this. I'm working through the like the wrinkles. I don't know what would be the best way. I was thinking maybe of getting like an like an electronic book and sharing the screen, sharing like the page on the screen, so you can read along with me if you want. Uh, or otherwise I could just, uh, I don't know, like we'll figure this out. Right. So feedback comments, always great. Always welcome. Thank you for that. So <clears throat> in any case, um, hold on. Well, let's not procrastinate. Let's get this started. First, let me put myself, make myself comfortable because I'm going to be reading this for you guys. So uh, cross my leg. And then, uh, I don't know, I mean, what, what would be good? Like having the book here like this? Anyways, so I'm going to be reading out of this book. Uh, 
microphone a little closer to me. Okay, there's the microphone. Yeah, so I'm not sure if it's better to have me big. Yeah, let's have me big. Why not? All right, I'm big. Look at me. Okay, and there's my microphone. Okay, all right. So let's let's try this first episode. It's a little rocky. It's it, it's gonna be a little rocky, but um, uh, we're just gonna do this. Okay. <clears throat> This story is called Elan Vital by K. Tempest Bradford. The few minutes I had spent in the Institute's waiting room were my least favorite part of coming up to visit my mother. It felt more like a dialysis room. The visitors sunk into the overly soft couches and not speaking, just drinking orange juice and recovering. There were no magazines, no television, just cold air blowing from the veins, from the vents. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I guess at some point I can edit this for um, whatever. Okay, let me try this again, guys. There were no magazines and no television, just cold air blowing from the vents and gen generic music flowing with it. I'd finished my juice and was beginning to brood on my dislike for overly air-conditioned buildings when my mother arrived attended by a nurse. I kissed her and hugged her, automatically asking how she was, mouthing the answer she always gave as she gave it again. I'm fine, same as always. It wasn't strictly true, but true enough. Let's go on out, she said, shrugging off the nurse's continued assistance. It's cold in here. Despite the hint, the nurse tried to help mom over the threshold. As always, she rebuffed any attempt to treat her like an old person. Where to today, she asked, slipping her arm into mine as we escaped the frigid building. Just down the lake, I said. Don't want to overexert you. She squeezed my arm as her feet slid carefully over the cobbled path. I wanted her to use a wheelchair or a walker, or at least she wouldn't. What you mean is what you mean is that we haven't got so much time today, she said. I shrugged instead of answering. I didn't want to go into why I couldn't afford much this trip. Next time I'll come for a couple of days at least, I promise. No, that's all right, she said. I don't want it. I don't I don't like it when you spend too much days. No, that's all right, she said. I don't like it when you spend so much for days and more. A few hours is fine. I helped her past the immaculately landscaped gardens and small orchards. The scent of flowers, herbs, and fresh-cut grass wafting at us in turn. I glanced at the garden entrances as we passed by, catching quick glances of other people in the middle of visits. A young couple who had been in the waiting room with me knelt by a small, bald girl as she splashed in the koi pond. Two elderly women stood under the weeping willow, and heads closed, lips barely moving. A large group of people speaking Mandarin milled around the waterfall in the rock garden. I could still hear faint traces of their melodic din all the way down by the lake. I preferred this spot. The flora was less regimented and more natural, and no walls, just open space, water gently flicking on the shoreline, a beautiful view down the hill, and the occasional cat wandering by. It hasn't changed much, Mom said, as I helped her down on one of the small benches by the water. I thought they were going to get ducks or geese or something. I chose a nearby rock for my own perch. I think they're having trouble with permits or whatever they need nowadays. The wind kicked up, sending freckles of reflected light across her face. Her skin was still perfect, beautiful, and dark brown, 
that was stretched across the cheekbones a little too tight. I had it. I hated that I never had enough to restore her round cheeks and full figure. I have to look at pictures just to remember her that way. You haven't changed much either, she said while fussing with my hair. I have bought some dye the week before, knowing she'd notice it. How long has it been? Three months. She let out a familiar sigh, part exhaustion, part exasperation, part sadness, I suppose. That's too soon. It's your birthday, though. Is it? It's fall already? She looked out over the small forest that edged the Institute's boundary a few miles away. The trees were still green, with no hint of turning. It always felt and looked like summer there, one of the reasons the administrators chose the location. I miss the seasons. Fall, colors, Christmas snow. You never did when we had to shovel it. That got her to smile. I reached out and held her hand, still a little cold even in the full sunlight. Besides, I missed you. I know, but... And I won't be able to come back until after the new year anyway, so I wanted to squeeze in one more visit, since today is special. Years ago, I used to bring her cake and presents on her birthday. She couldn't really eat the cake. One of the side effects of whatever they did when they brought her back, the presents had to go back home with me since she didn't have any place to put them and couldn't wear clothing or jewelry when she went back to sleep. I hated having to give that up, too. Okay, I'll give you a pass this time. She kissed my cheek seeming more like her old self. Where are you off to? Rwanda. R Rwanda. For a dig. Dr. Bergman promised I'd be more of a glorified volunteer wrangler this trip, and they want me for a year. Still, I'll try to come back and see you sooner than that. No, you should concentrate on your work. I'll still be here. My mother never changed. It was the same... When she was sick, I wanted to take a break from college and stay home with her. It was pretty clear that her death was inevitable by that time. The only question being, how long? I wanted to be with her. She wanted me back in class. If you take a leave of absence, you might never go back, she said. So I went back. For me, it'll seem like you've gone and come back right away trying to reassure me again. I know, I said. Must be strange not being able to perceive the passage of time. We didn't say anything for a while. This was the part of the visit where one of us either addressed the elephant in the room or steer the conversation around it. At least I'm not as bad as Ella, she said. We both laughed. My aunt, her older sister, who was notorious for being late, that we started her funeral a few hours behind schedule because it felt just right. My cousin Brandon joked that we should have carved an epitaph on her headstone. I'll be back in five minutes. Remember that time she was supposed to pick me up from rehearsal or something? And you waited for her, caught the bus, and was home before she, she'd even left the house? Mom kept me laughing for a long time recounting trips she'd taken with Ella and their cousins and everything that went wrong because they were never anywhere on time. Stories I'd heard dozens of times before and wouldn't have minded hearing a hundred times again. More and more, her laughs ended with a small coughing fit. I checked the time. We had about 45 minutes left. Do you want to head back? I asked. Sit inside for a bit before you die, she said. You don't die. Technically, I do, according to the doctors, anyway. I didn't argue. I didn't even want to be talking about it. I was never there when my mother went back under, as the nurses put it. It was against institute rules. 
I suppose for I suppose for some people it might have been upsetting to see if their loved ones in the capsule's residence stayed in. Too much like a coffin for me. It felt wrong not by not to be by her side when it happened. It was with her when she first died, after all. Seeing that I wasn't going to go there, Mom leaned back and turned her face to the sunlight. No, let's stay out here a little longer. It's a nice day. I could go back tomorrow, get a few hours, I said. It wouldn't matter if I stayed a little longer. It wouldn't matter if I stayed a little longer. There wasn't anyone waiting for me back home. You now... You know how I feel about that, she looked. Her look was semi-stern. You don't want to end up here yourself, not for a long time, if ever. At least we'd be together, I said, smiling. But who would bring us Thank back? Thank you for following Divergent number five. I'm sure I could bribe Brandon's kids to do it. I wasn't particularly close to my cousin anymore, though his oldest called me on the holidays. My guess was she'd been coveting my share of our grandmother's house. You've given a lot of thought. I'm surprised. I knew I had to tread very carefully. It may come up someday. You haven't said you want to stop. And if anything happens to me, it's in my will that I want to come here after, after here if I can. Mom gazed at me at a steadily... Mom gazed at me steadily for what felt uh, like a long time. Are you sure you know what you want? That alarmed me more than a little. Why? Is there, I mean, something that isn't right? Is it? When you avoid talking about something for so long, it's hard to know how to start. Is it bad? The dying? I don't know, really. They always induce sleep before that moment. Though I have been more reluctant to talk about this, I could tell my mother was holding back, not saying some things. That scared me even more. She was always very upfront with me, except when it came to what was going on with her. Usually, it was really bad. What's it like afterwards, while you're gone? She shook her head, her look far away. To be honest, I don't know. Better than the answer I've been dreading. Answers plural, actually. Nothing I could imagine made me feel particularly good. Either I was ripping my mother away from the glories of heaven or giving her the only respites from the tortures of hell. The preachers and protesters all had their own variations of those themed and loved to scream them at me, or anyone else driving past the gates whenever I came up, I don't know was at least not guilt-inducing. So is it missing light? Is that what's going on? Sorry, guys. I'm just kind of like thinking about... Um, Oh, thanks for following Divergent number five. Appreciate the follow. Didn't wasn't looking at my comments. Uh, oh boy, sorry. This is something I always have a problem when I read. I, I lose track of where I am. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Let's get back to this. Better than the answer I've been dreading. Answers, plurally, actually. Nothing I could imagine made me feel particularly good. Either I was ripping my mother away from the glories of heaven or giving her only small respites from the tortures of hell. The preachers and protesters all had their variations of those themes and loved to scream them at me or anyone else driving past the gates. Whenever I came up, I don't know, was at least not guilt-inducing. It's like, it's a little like waking up from a dream, she said a couple of for a couple minutes. I know that I've been dreaming and I even intend to remember the dream, but I can't recall a single element once I wake up. That must, that must be frustrating. I sometimes dreamed of what she did and where she went while I was gone. Many times 
I was there with her. Those were my favorites. It's the way things are, she said and shrugged. Ironic, though, isn't it? I don't know how anyone about the afterlife... I don't know any... I don't know any more about the afterlife than anyone else, and I've been dead how many years? Seven. Hmm. She smiled. My favorite smile. One where the corners of her mouth turned down, and yet it was still somehow a smile. I guess I'm having trouble with time. I thought it would have been longer. I still couldn't get over the fact that it had been, that it had happened at all, at all. It wasn't fair. I was too young to lose my mother, and she was too young to be dying. Only 53. Not fair at all. So when the UR Institute approached me in the hospital, I was primed to listen and agree. They would handle all of the funeral arrangements and costs and even buy a crypt for her in the cemetery where my mother and father and brother were buried. No one else would know that she wasn't in there. Only I knew that she was actually resting in the institute waiting to be reanimated. You could have your mother back for a couple days or a few times a year, they said. Holidays, birthdays, your wedding day. They had me from hello. It didn't matter that the only reason they were prepared to foot the bills was that they wanted to study how people who died from cancer reacted to the resurrection process. It didn't matter that I couldn't tell the rest of the family. Only a few people knew that the Institute wasn't just reanimating rich old ladies' cats anymore. It didn't matter that I wouldn't have to provide the Elan Vital necessary to reanimate her again for those few hours or days. For or that these transfusions <coughs> or that these transfusions shortened my own lifespan, sometimes caused considerable health problems in other donors, and took the ability to have children of my own, it didn't matter. I just wanted my mother back. It can't have been only seven years, Mom was frowning now. Oh, right. It's been more like ten. My hand went up the nape. My hand went up the nape of my neck, rubbing the tender spot they always used to access. I thought I'd gotten rid of that tick. Oh, he's like, do something like this, I guess. Um... Has it? She was page paging back through her memory. I couldn't tell from her look. I excluded casualness. My only defense against my mother's ability to catch a lie. I, I excluded casualness. My only defense against a mother's ability to catch you in a lie. Like you said, the process messes with you with your sense of time. I developed this tendency to treat her like a doddering old woman. Like a doddering old woman. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Let's try this again. I have developed this tendency to treat her like a doddering old woman. She was only 53 and would have been 53. She was only 53 and would have always and would always be 53. She never aged. Just backed up from death a few steps before going ahead again. The resurrection, the resurrection process didn't work well on cancer patients particularly cancers of the blood. She was perpetually sick-seeming, though the pain wasn't as bad. That made it easy to fool myself by thinking she was getting old and forgetting when her memory was as sharp as ever. I've been resurrected 26 times. I know because someone told me when I hit 20. They weren't supposed to tell her stuff like that. Six visits should have been three years ago, she continued. How long has it actually been? And of course she was giving me that look. The one that mothers have when you've been caught forging a report card signature or sneaking into a movie when you're supposed to be in the algebra class. There's no point lying then. A little over a year, I admitted. I could see her ramping up. Mom, it's... When I agreed to do this, it was on the condition that you would only do two transfusions a year, three at most. Now you're telling me six? No, listen. 
Shannon, that's too many. It's dangerous. You're throwing your years away. I'm not. Years of your life of the past. There was more to the speech, but I but a chime interrupted. A patient had an electronic monitor bracelet to keep track of vital signs, warn of danger, and count the time left. It chimed again, informing us that we had 20 minutes. We should start back, I said, knowing she didn't need the whole 20 for the walk. No, sit down. Mom, please, we need to go. She pointed at my rock. Not until we talk about this. There was nothing to do but give in. You can't keep doing this, she said, using the voice, like I was a small child and she was explaining why I couldn't have something I begged and begged for at the store. This five or six however many times a year, you promised me. I know, and I'm sorry I lied, but I didn't want you to worry, and I couldn't afford it any other way. Afford what? I thought they said this was free. There had been several times I'd wanted to tell her this, to tell anyone really, but she wouldn't have listened. She would have just made me stop. The storage is free, I said. I hated that word and the way they used it. But the resurrection is the resurrect <clears throat> but the resurrection isn't. The fees went up once they went public. I couldn't always afford it. And I couldn't wait years between seeing you again. Then they developed a way to transfer vital force between non-family members. I wanted to turn away, but I forced myself to look her in the eye. People pay a lot of money for that. I have only seen my mother cry a few times in life. Seeing tears in her eyes broke me down to a child when I was... Seeing tears in her eyes broke me down to the child I was when I first saw them. When you're three or 30, your mother cries because of something you've done. You want to turn back time or vow the perfect daughter for the rest, or vow to be the perfect daughter for the rest of your life, anything to make it better. <coughs> Every time I do it for someone else, they think, <clears throat> hold on, let me try this, let me try this again. Every time I do it for someone else, they let me do it for you too. For short visits, then I can earn enough money to buy longer ones. You have to stop. She squeezed my hand tight and drew me over the bench. Mom, it's okay, I'm fine. The process is much more refined now and much less dangerous. No, this isn't right. But I'm helping people, helping them hang on to the life to a life a little longer. Mom made me look into her eyes. Why aren't their family members doing it for them? Why are they paying someone else to do it? There are probably dozens of legitimate reasons I could have given her. But in the end, it all came down to the fact that people with that kind of money to throw around didn't need to give themselves didn't need to give off themselves to fulfill their desires so they didn't nor did they have to when they were plenty of people like me around the monitor chimed again she pressed a button to silence it then it then took it off altogether mom shannon i love you i would do anything for you i did this for you i was the one crying now you didn't really want to, though, did you? No, baby, I did. She wiped the tears from my cheeks. A futile act as if they were now torrential. When I, when I died, I had no regrets but one, that I was leaving you. I wouldn't get to see you graduate college or get married or be a mother yourself. I would miss your life, and I hated that thought. It was nearly dark. The lights around the lake blinked on and illuminated her hollow face. My mother's body wasted 
by away by cancer cancer that would kill her again right in the front eyes if we stayed any longer they warned every resident to get back to the institute before before they said if the proper procedure wasn't followed it couldn't res it could result in damage or worse how many years has this taken from you not just the seven we've been doing this but the years they leached I closed my eyes, seeing my face as it looked in the mirror each morning. No wrinkles to speak of, that was down to her jeans. But her gray hairs, the stiff joints, the fatigue made me feel older than 30. Hell, older than 40 most days. They don't know, it's hard to tell. They just don't know, and it doesn't matter. Of course it matters. No, it doesn't, because you're my mother because I'm supposed to take care of you, because I wasn't there when you had your operations or when you had chemo or all the times you needed me. I was off sort of through dead people's things. <clears throat> Sorry. I was off sorting. I was off sorting through dead people's things and wondering which pottery shred came from which dynasty or other bullshit that didn't matter. <coughs> The bracelet beeped again. I took a few minutes to calm down, knowing that minutes was all I had left. But my throat was so tight that I could barely breathe, and I didn't want to lose it. I thought of you every day, she said with effort. But every day I was glad you weren't there to see me like that. I didn't want that to be how you remembered me. Sending you back to college was an easy excuse. I wiped my face dry as best I could, then swept away the tears on her cheeks. So atonement for us both then? I let it go on for too long though, she said. It was obvious that she was a great deal she was in a great deal of pain and did not intend to do anything about it. I just didn't want to leave you again, so don't. At some point I have to. I'm dead, baby. You can bring back you can bring me back a hundred times and nothing will change that. It's not fair. She wrapped her, out, her arms around me. No one ever promised you fair. No, no one ever did. Not even her. Five minutes before we were supposed to be back in the main building, a nurse found us. My mom's head resting on my shoulder, my arm holding close to her. Ma'am, do you need help getting back? He asked. She's not going back, I said, my eyes never leaving the water. But Miss Tidmore, she needs to get back if we're... I'm exercising my right to allow my mother a full and natural death. The minutes ticked away. Mom's body started to tremble. The pain kicking in, her time ran out. The pain kicking in as if, as if her time had run out. She'd lost consciousness just after the nurse went to get help or reinforcements. It was hard sitting there knowing that she was in pain. In the end, she left the decision up to me, just like she had seven years ago before in the hospital. My aunts had been taking care of her but I had the power of attorney. I could let her go. I could let the Institute bring her back. Now by the lake, footsteps approaching, it was the same. I could let her go or I could bring her back. When they came back, I knew they would try to change my mind. They would argue and reason and sound very convincing. They couldn't force me though. It was in the contract. I held her, I held her hand. I waited forever. It was over too soon, but I was there. The end. Whoa. Okay. So uh, that took like 30 minutes of reading. Pretty good, right? I thought that was a pretty good story. I liked it. These 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 stories are pretty great. So, anyways, what did we what was the, what was the takeaway of the story? Um, it is the future, and they were able to reanimate people that have died so that you can like
continue having conversations with them. That's kind of interesting. And she somehow was not able to pay for the resurrection fees. So she was donating time of her personal life so that other people could resurrect their loved ones so that she could pay the fees so that she could talk to her dead mom. And yeah, you know, I guess the only thought that came, came to my mind reading this was that maybe she, I mean, she said that she had promised to do like two of those a year, right? Because every time she talks to her mom, she's giving away a little bit of her lifetime. And, and then she started like leasing her life to other people so that she could pay for time with her mom. Right. So the thought that was crossing my mind was that maybe she had given up too much of her time because she said that she felt tired. Right. Then maybe she had given up too much of her own personal time. And that maybe she was going to die before her mom that was already like re resuscitated. But I guess, you know, they kind of left it open and they, she, she, she let her mom go.